though, for the sound effects. You're welcome. Guys, big momentous episode. Another excellent one, in my opinion, for some of my favorite actors. Returning Mandalorian Chapter 15, The Believer. But first, let's get a special word from our sponsors. Hey guys, are you tired of people telling you what you can and can't watch? Well, I am. Never miss great content like this again. Oh my God. Never miss this. I don't know about <laughs> hair Blocked. Pink hair. Wow. Blocked. Yeah. Uh, I look terrible with pink Pe- hair. Yeah. Yeah. I look the, great. If you, that looks it's good. Great. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I have partnered up with Surfshark VPN. Never again will Netflix or Disney Plus tell me that I can't watch something. Get straight. <laughs> so now you've got uh, access to Fantastic Beasts because that was only playing in Australia. You can want to go watch that on Netflix in Australia. You can. And all of that plus protect your data guys so that's super important so oh, yeah. i like it when uh nobody's telling me what i can and can't watch and my data is protected right now we are running an 83 percent off promotion for the angry army at surfshark we have our own link surfshark dot deals backslash angry joe show click those links down below and get full access the access that you deserve. Mm -hmm. You're right. I love Surfshark for that. Okay, guys, enjoy the rest of the review. Huge thanks to Surfshark uh, for uh, making the series possible and supporting the Angry Joe Show. If you guys want to support them, click those links down below. Unlock all the content available to you and protect your privacy. It's important, and we got a good deal down there for you. So let's get straight into the episode, guys, because... (laughs) <laughs> there was huge announcements, which we went through it completely <laughs> together. Uh, Disney Plus, you're looking at 10 new Star Wars stuff. You're looking at 10 Marvel stuff. So you're bringing uh, Disney is going all in on its Disney Plus. And if that content is as good as this content that we just watched, this episode kind of confirming for me that if you have the right people behind it, if you have passion, you put some good money behind it, and it looks good, it can actually create good Star Wars content, good dramatic content in general. What did you guys think about The Believer? Oh, man, this one I loved. Did um, it make you a believer? Joe? It did. It <laughs> I did. was already a believer. It made me also miss Bill Burr. I just love whenever <laughs> oh he's my on the God, screen. He just, I know. He, he's great when he's in it. How he much- is the perfect blend of cool, sarcastic, funny, uh, relatable. I was so happy to see Bill Burr return yes. because I was like, I want Bill Burr to be a good guy. And that's kind of what we got here. Mm-hmm. He, we got we got the the. The other side of Bill Burr, instead of him being a jerk, uh, it works out to a really cool story. Mm-hmm. I want to know how many times. I want to know the blooper reel for him because I, he curses Joel, a lot. how are you so high? Uh, you are three times the size of okay, Alex. He has me sitting on the floor. That's true. <laughs> I need to so look taller. Hopefully we can, I can edit that right. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so he – I just I, I listen to a lot of his comedy and when he does interviews and he curses all the time. So it's just like how many times he's like, Bill, this is a Disney show. Yeah. You cannot be saying <laughs> fuck on The Mandalorian. <laughs> like you, you cannot be doing it. But I think he did a great job. I mean, there were a lot of people that are like, this is a comedic actor. If even a, and not even a comedian. He's a comedian. He's not much. He's not known stand-up to be a comedian. Guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a stand up guy. But he did a really great job. And so I was glad to see him back. Definitely. Um, so this starts off with uh, basically uh, we get to see a sort of prison with a lot of little cool little Easter eggs, some different machineries in there, some cockpits, some just trash all around. Uh, salvage yard. Yeah. And he's sort of a prisoner kind of being put to work there. Uh, a character Mayfeld, I think. Uh, I think mm-hmm. so. And uh, so Cara Dune shows up. We got this robot, you know, prisoner or something. Five, seven, eight, Three, four, two, one. Six, it's six, constantly seven. repeating his name. He's like, I'm working here. Leave me alone. I'm working here. Leave me alone. That goddamn Republic always wondering what to do. But it turns out Cara shows up and, 
and uh, the Slave One shows up. Here you go. You got freaking uh, Boba Fett who has appeared to clean up his armor. Oh, my God. I, when I saw that, it just brought back even more nostalgia. Just like, man, that's so mm. fucking badass. Yeah, he finally uh, did a little bit of refurbishing because he's he had, had it in. Uh, in the slave one, or do you think he's like, look, I know we're on a rescue mission to save your child, but I got to stop over at Oshai. Oh, I need to. a new paint job. He had to. <laughs> yeah. Well uh, worth it. Well worth it. He does look fucking cool. I just love Boba Dad Fett. Dad Fett, essentially. Mm. Uh, he's got this badass look on his face all the time. He's just a fucking, you know, you, you feel his presence in, in the room and in the scene. Um, and he's like, oh, man, I, th- I thought you were uh, – this one Mando that I know, and <laughs> he makes way, and uh, Mandalorian comes down. He's like, God damn it, because <laughs> um, they have history. And they basically recruit him for the job. What do I get out of it? So. Better view. <laughs> just just come. Yeah. And so they convince him to, to come. They didn't really convince him. They just bring him along. Uh, I just love all the attention to detail in this show. You can tell that these people care. You go inside the slave one. And the interior is actually rotating because as that ship takes off or uh, transferring between, you know, uh, stratosphere flight and space flight and stuff, you, you got the little rotator and perfectly done. I don't know if they had they built a set where the, to do that or if that was the green screen stuff that they were doing. But it just looks great. And that kind of attention to details like, wow, the Star Wars universe to me is so great because of all of these creative designs that artists and, and skillful people have put time and effort into. Yeah, they're doing uh, such a great job. It's actually making me feel like a kid again because like before it lost that charm with me. But now exactly. it's, it's bringing it back yeah. and I want more of it, more which of is it. great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so uh, they go to the planet and this planet looks fantastic. I love the scenery that they have in this one because it's it reminds me a little of Scarif just without the water, you know, Uh, because it's a jungle planet and you get that lush green um, and it's just so cool and what I loved most about this particular episode so they say how do we we need to get uh, Bill Burr's character in there uh, in order to uh, use the communicator or the uh, the signal center in order to figure out Moff Gideon and and where he's at and and send him a message and we're coming for him uh, but in order to do this, they have to infiltrate the base. And uh, Boba can't go because let's just say that every single wink, face wink. that the Empire <laughs> has seen is Boba's face. Mm. And, you know, Kara's obviously, you know, a, re- a rebel yeah, commando and stuff and scanning. So they're like, all right, the only people that could step up is Bill Burr's character. Mayfield. And then, exactly, and then Din Djarin. And you're like, what the f-? Like, is he going to have to – take his armor off and it's like yes you you can't just walk in there with mandalorian armor and i guess i saw this on twitter or someone before this episode which made me so mad because it ruined it is that somebody's (laughs) like gonna uh they speculated that din jazarin would have to take off his uh helmet in order to save grogu or to take off his armor that's uh, you know kind of what happens here. He doesn't actually take it off. He uses replaces a it. replaces <laughs> it with imperial helmet. It's perfect because the imperial helmets obviously they hide your entire face. So he he thinks he's safe essentially. He's just clinging to his uh, how he was growing up and how he is taught. And they have this excellent dialogue exchange, and that's the good writing in the series really shows up here in the natural. Uh, way that they talk to each other so you got uh, Mayfield just talking with uh, Mando about you know Alderaan and the Empire and where you grow up is kind of what influences your you know your your look on things and basically kind of prodding him to take his helmet off you know it's like you know show you know show your face he's like looking around and and he's like you know it looks a lot better without the the mask (laughs) and stuff so um and Bill's like, I, I can't stand this anymore. So he takes that thing off. He's constantly complaining. The gloves are still yeah, wet. This guy reeks. Yeah. And uh, so they're driving to enter the base. But something really fucking cool happens. Uh, you know, as they're looking around, they're like, and there's kind of a lot of Imperial 
wreckage here. Uh, there appears to be a little guerrilla war going on, and they get a little uneasy because they're like, oh, shit, this is a situation where we could be attacked, you know? And uh, just then, boom, massive explosion in the distance. And I was like, oh, that is so awesome. And then another explosion, and all the people are like, and they're like, oh, shit, what the fuck is going on? And pirates show up. And it and they and the episode kind of shows another side of uh, galactic war. Uh, it doesn't matter sometimes to these planets. It doesn't really matter if it's the Empire or the New Republic. To some of these people, they're just invaders. Period. Yeah. So kind of the the rebels are like, um, we're not always the 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 shining armor white knight good guys. Uh, sometimes they are. They actually, you know have to implement rules and, and, and impose their will on other planets just like the Empire. So it's, it's a cool little thing that they were doing there. Uh, just then the pirates show up. They're basically throwing thermal detonators into these highly volatile uh, types of uh, uh, fuel or mining or something. Uh, and it's just causing massive explosions. So obviously Mando has to get out and man like fight them in hand-to-hand -hand because... <laughs> Well, he actually, Mando's like, I'm a, I'm a damn good shot, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot a few of these guys. The pirates off first. like, we've never seen anything like this. Dude, what the fuck are you doing? We're actually getting hit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, right, because he's not in the Mandalorian armor. He's in the Empire Trooper armor. He's yeah. like, damn, this guy's a good shot yeah. compared the to these other ones. Can shoot. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, eventually he runs out of ammo. I don't know how that happens, but it gets us to the Laser action jam. scene. Laser jam. Happens all the like, time with the printers. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so great hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes, and he's just taking them out one at a time. You believe that he is a hand. Con he's an expert. I was hoping maybe he'd get shot once, just and then make the comment like, "This armor's worthless." Well, he got beat up pretty got, good. Like the yeah, plastic steel yeah, armor yeah. is get constantly getting wrecked. You can see that when he gets hit and it breaks, he looks at it because it's, he's it used hurt. to he's that used to wearing hurt. like you know plot armor, and he's not wearing <laughs> plot armor anymore. I where love uh, so he's, he's it, it makes sense that he's getting knocked down. He's getting beaten because he doesn't have any of that. Yeah, stuff. I, I wanted one more little drop scene in there somewhere, but it was uh, executed perfectly. Um, and then uh, essentially the last moment they get overwhelmed, just wave after wave of these pirates coming in. And they are literally the last transport and they're racing and they see a bridge. It is decrepit. They need to slow down. This stuff is volatile, by the way. Just the speed alone is actually causing yeah, actually uh, issues. And so... You know, Mayfield's like trying to uh, drive this thing there. And then at a certain point, the pirates are seeing like all their pirate buddies getting their asses kicked. And they're like, all right, fuck this. Everybody engages their grenades and they're just oh, ready no. to fucking throw them so that they get up real close, which they probably should have done in the first place, right? But, uh, you know, they're driving up, and I'm like, well, th there's no way. They're here. I, you see the trope coming. You know what's going to happen. They're going to get saved. Uh, I just thought it was going to be somebody on Mando's side uh, or maybe the Imperials, and it was the Imperials, and it was so awesome. Right. For yeah. once, to see the Imperials have, like, this heroic music. The Empire did nothing wrong, mm -hmm. right? You see it's time for this? Yeah! Yeah! Wait a Wait, minute. Are we, <laughs> are we supposed to be doing Yeah! Wait. We were like, yeah! And then we are like, is that? <laughs> you know, saluting. Uh. Because in this instance, they are, you know, they, they are heroic. They saved them at the last minute. Some TIE fighters come in. By the way... Don't do that. <laughs> Time fighters are terrible shots. I was like, oh, my God, you're, too, you're shooting too close to this vehicle. Yeah. This thing oh, is yeah, extremely Don't dangerous. think about that scene longer than 10 seconds because it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> they, would have, they would have exploded immediately. If you can't go fast around that stuff to make it explode, like, you think the massive explosions <laughs> around them would make it explode? And then, no, they <laughs> saved uh, them. They no, saved. no. Yep. And then the troops come. And, well, the troops were realistic because notice when the troops come, they don't fire until they're like five feet away. <laughs> they, can <see. laughs> they can't see. <laughs> and so they killed him uh, and they rescued them and you know you got some battle wear you know empire troops but you know it's like whoa this is so cool and i was like are they actually gonna do this they're gonna go into depth on the empire and like show a different side of the empire uh because they roll up the the, the tank or the transport they get out and there's people cheering for them you know mm -hmm. and and people with their helmets off and you actually get to see these are these are some of these are humans some of these are recruited they're not all just like you know clones and stuff um but that's kind of – they kind of play around with it, but not as far as I thought they were going. Instead, they go uh, 
the other direction, which is the Empire, just that mm, oh so bad. I love hating the Imperial officers. The casting has been so spot on yes. in this series because the casting. You go and look at Disney's sequels, right? No, I don't and want the, to. You don't want to. No, it's funny. <laughs> to bring them up. Never they're, they're bad. Just <laughs> no, never again. No. The First Order officers were all little kids with their little, you know, cowlick haircuts, and and they just did not exude, uh, you know, what the Empire needs to to exude. And that might have been the the point and the purpose of it, but it's just not. It pales in comparison to what the Empire and these Imperial Office should be. And they nailed the casting on this guy. I don't know. what. Do you know his name, Joe? Uh, Richard Brake. Richard Brake. He was uh, Joe Chill mm -hmm. in uh, Batman Begins. He was... Uh, if you guys haven't seen this movie, I recommend you don't. It's called Tremors Shriek Island. <laughs> I'm telling, that? You, I'm telling you not to watch Are you going to force it. us on the next OJ's bad films? That was a that bad, one. bad one. It's <laughs> a bad, bad one. Anyway, he's there, <laughs> and he's cast perfectly because, you know, this officer, so they're trying to get to the terminal. There's a bit of a problem. Uh, Bill Burr's character says, you know, I served under that guy. And he, like, walks in, walks out. <laughs> he's like, fuck. Not suspicious at all. <laughs> yeah. And so he's like, you're going to need to do it. I was like, ah, they've been setting it up all episode long, kind of prodding uh, the Mandalorian to take his helmet off, and what do you really care about? And he's like, no, we got to turn back. He's like, no, we can't. This is important to me. And so at that moment, he makes a character development change where he's like, I'm taking my helmet off in order to save my son, Grogu. And this episode pretty much confirms it, especially uh, towards the end, which we'll get oh, yeah. to. Uh, so he goes up. Um, you know, it's the Mando, Din, Din uh, goes over there. <clears throat> and takes his helmet off, and he's, like, scanning his face with the Imperial officers, like, staring at him, like, what are these guys doing? This looks out of place. So he goes over there and confronts him. And it's like, fuck, and the tension is real good because that guy's a good actor. He's like, yeah, just like, <laughs> it's like, fuck. Um, and last minute, because um, Din Djarin is not very good at uh, espionage, so he didn't do any of his homework beforehand, doesn't have any answers ready. Luckily, Mayfield Feld comes at last minute and saves him because he knows the commander, so he knows yeah. a little bit about the Imperial, uh, you know, designation. Saves his ass and does the whole, uh, he's deaf. Uh, yeah. One of the drops. He's hard of hearing, yeah. Explosion. We got to go. We got to file the TPS reports. I love like, it. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, office. Office. Um, uh, reference. So funny. Uh, of course, Bill is the one that mm -hmm. gets to reference it. So he's like, ah, ah. You're not dismissed, you know, and there's fuck. He's like, you know, yeah, puts his he did the bad guy Columbo thing. Yes. Which is, and one more thing. One more. Let's go have a drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some more tropes, but done well. Boy, yeah. I love it. So they sit down. They're having a drink and they're having this conversation. Um, and there it shows you this series is not afraid of any expanded lore. This is how you do it, guys. Uh, Operation Cinder is brought up. Now, for those of you who don't know, that's Battlefield. Uh, that's Star Wars EA's Battlefield. <laughs> Right. But the good parts, right? Mm -hmm. The the story where um, it's canon that the Empire uh, started to attack its own. When the Emperor dies, his ex contingency plan went into place and he's like sort of purging the Empire. And so the Empire is fighting their own planets that they subjugated and in, in many cases destroying and killing their own soldiers. And we learn a little bit more about Mayfeld's backstory, well, we which is... Troops. Yes. Yeah, you know, oh, <laughs> written so well. Yes, but we'll kill some of theirs as well. <laughs> Braveheart. Uh, it's that kind of situation. He's like, there, let's have a drink. They're, they're heroes of the empire. And he's like, heroes? Really? You think they'd see it that? And he's like, you know, and you can tell their that families, that that, yeah. that Jersey side or, or where where the Boston side rather space than Boston, yeah, yeah, space like, oh, Boston shit, side of feel, it. Don't do it, man. And you go, you don't gotta do, do it. it. And then he you says, see him looking over like, stop. <laughs> he fucking pushed. I know, right? Uh, Mando was like, cut it out. And he's like, no, he pushes him over that edge, and he's yep. like, uh, I forget what exactly he says. Do you know the 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 scene that triggers him? Anyways. It triggers him, literally. Yeah, it's basically, I think he said, it's like, it was for, it's good for the Empire. It's like, oh, what about the families? It's like, well. Yo, they were heroes. They like, were you heroes. think that the, the families oh, look at right. that way? And then he lifts up the glass and goes, to the Empire. And he goes, yeah. Bam! It blows <laughs> That was cool. So 
damn cool because it dropped. You can hear a pin drop in the room because all the <laughs> there's a little empire guy who looks like he's at school lunch. He's got like a little milk carton. He's like, what the <laughs> fuck? I feel bad for him. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck is happening? But he did draw his gun, though. Right, and then he went for his gun. Everybody's going for their guns. And then, of course, you know, bam, bam. So it just turns into a big fucking, you know, showdown at the OK Corral. Everybody's firing. They they go out the window. Luckily, they, they did find some way to, you know, escape. Uh, and uh, you got Cara Dune posted up outside. You got Fennec posted up outside. They're they're crack shots, both of them. So they're sniping these troopers as they're trying to get you know. There it's it's like a dam or something going mm-hmm. on there. So for electricity and energy, and they died the entire time that they were dying. Uh-huh. You know, it's like he gets shot and he's falling, and the entire time he's like, uh, I'm dying. Uh. I fucking love him. I love so every good, single blood. Curdle scream from the Empire as they get shot. Slave One comes around. I thought Slave One was going to run interference, just like fight some TIE fighters and, and cause some problems so that the Empire is like, oh, shit, do we go after these guys or do we take care of this situation? But no, he comes right up, you know, danger close, jump on the ship. So they jump on the ship. I thought Bill Burr was going to miss because he's not quite as athletic, but no, he's got his he own. Got close enough. Yeah. He's been doing hard labor nonstop at prison skills. camp. He's got some muscles right now. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and but before they, he leaves, just he's still fucking pissed. The fact that, you know, the Empire basically murdered families and betrayed him and, and, and on his planet, so that's a little bit of his backstory. His, his people or friends and colleagues were probably killed five to ten thousand were killed in operation cinder and that's why at this point he doesn't agree with the republic doesn't doesn't particularly like them but hell sure as hell doesn't agree with the empire anymore hates them as well um and and their sort of uh arrogance and stuff so he takes a, a, a mando sniper rifle and fires at the volatile uh transport that was there the whole time takes out all those people that we saw cheering and then they, they, they saved their asses. But no, fuck them all. You're on the Empire. You should have never joined the Empire. You can join the Rebellion anytime you want. Anytime you want to go to the New Republic, you can. So uh. fuck them all. <laughs> and he fucks them all. He kills them all. They're all dead. Basically. And, uh, Some of them may have lived. Probably. May, maybe. maybe a few. There's some casual. The good ones. <laughs> yeah. The good ones lived. Well, uh, I like to believe that. I like the gray morality. I like the fact that, you know what, yes, He's going to murder when it comes to it. You have to. Uh, and, and it's a difficult situation. Yeah, because he said with that shipment that we brought in, we're going to We're going to do exactly the same thing. We're, we're going to use it to bomb people. I, yeah. like, I can't I, I allow that. So right. He had to do it. Yo, and you could see it in his eyes, yeah. too. He's like, he realized in that moment, I done fucked up. I brought you the shit. So yeah. I'm going to blow that shit up on the way out. Great character development that tied directly into the storyline, tied directly into the action scenes, everybody acting the way they should, the, their their skills being shown off um, in, in great, fantastic ways, believable, loved it, loved the Star Wars lore, love all the practical effects and, and, and the CGI. It's great. Great all around. So uh, they come back together, and it's like time to take them back, right? And... But Kara, you know, this whole time she's kind of seeing the behavior, the change in behavior in, in Mayfeld. And she's realizing he kind of hates the Empire almost as much as she does. And, mm-hmm. or, you know, close to it. And she sees a change in him. And so she has a little bit of a change of heart when it's time to take him back. She's like, hey, uh, it's a damn shame that uh, Prisoner 5721 died. And they're both looking at each other. And I even look at him and he's like... What? I'm, you're going to kill me? <laughs> I'm right here. It's like, no, he's, I guess he perished when we um, did this little mission. He's like, can I, can I go? <laughs> so that was a fun little scene. Yeah, right he's there. walking away. He's like, Are you gonna, he thought they were going to shoot him in the back. He's like, yeah. oh. Mando gives him the head nod. Like, hey, get out, get out of here. Go on, get. Go on, go on kid. Go so back now, to Space Boston. He gets to, he gets to go to Space Boston. And hopefully he gets to it's forge not his own the path. last time we see him. I know. Hey, look, but around. you know what? If it is... Bill Burr's character, he's like one of my new favorite characters oh, yeah, in the Star sure. Wars lore. Yeah. There are characters in The Mandalorian that are far more interesting than in Rogue One, that, than in uh, uh, Solo, than in, uh, you know, of course, the actual Disney trilogy. 
<laughs> sequel trilogy. <laughs> you okay? And it just blows me away. Like, Bill Burr's better than all of them. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, so I was just so happy to see him again. And, and I do think maybe one more time, right, for a final yeah. confrontation yeah. or a battle or something. Uh, but if not, cool. He, he, he got his moments, and he got some badass ones. I'm very jealous. Uh, and so, anyways, uh, at the end, uh, they gave they got the information that they needed from the Empire Outpost, and uh, they get to send a message to Moff Gideon. So we're on Moff Gideon's ship. It's in, and he turns around. Message comes through, and it's Mando in the, in the hollow deck, essentially, and uh, basically just slapping Moff Gideon in the face using his own pretentious words against him. Uh, but giving it further meaning by instead of referring to the asset as it, he's like him, you know, uh, you have no idea how much he means to me instead of it means to me. And at that point, it's con- it's like, you have my son. Ever. He has my son! Give me back, Give my, back my son! Give me <laughs> back my son! <laughs> exactly, man. So, <laughs> and uh, we set up for the final battle. So just a fantastic episode in the calm before the storm, right? And um, and so, uh, really great. Let's go ahead and uh, jump to final verdicts. And this is going to be another 10 for me. This is like d- writing done great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, whenever Bill Burr took over the show, mm-hmm. he was all about it this for this episode. One, this episode. And whenever the TIE Fighters came in, I'm che- I'm there cheering for the TIE Fighters. Like, <laughs> Wait a minute. This is no, it's not supposed to work yeah. like that. But obviously, we got their tropes. It's like, oh, phase one complete. We're going to hit yeah. a little snag next one. It's like, but it's still entertaining throughout. And even when they make the little pack, he's like, put your helmet back on. Like, I, I, oh, shot, right. I shot the guy. Nice little I never saw moment. your face. Never saw your face. It's like, that's the bro right there. The bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bro great moment. writing. Great action. I love this one. And seeing Boba Fett again with mm-hmm. his new amazing Dad armor. Bod. Dad armor. Dad armor. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, you know, I was going back and forth between on Antenna because I think these last couple episodes have all been incredible. Yep. This one doesn't have the expanded universe-wide impact that some of the last ones did, but I think that this one did such a good job in how... Look, look again, this one's like 32 minutes long, so shame mm-hmm. on you, man. Make them longer. What's wrong with you? If we're in the second to last episode, it's 32 minutes. Oh, yeah. That I was going to defer. That is, size. that is a crime. Super we're size. going into the final one. Give me more time. <laughs> that but final one better be an hour. It, it should. But in 32 minutes, they did a better job explaining the villainy perspective. It's like it's a matter of perspective. Whose side you're on? Talking about neutral parties. Exactly. It doesn't matter to them. They did a better job in the 32 minutes than in almost anything we've done, seen in Star Wars yeah. or in movies or in TV shows that take long, long Even periods of time. Even better than Kylo Ren. The well, whole Kylo Ren storyline. Yeah, but better than Kylo Ren. It's like, come on. Like, I know, but you that's see such what a I'm low saying? bar. <laughs> to, but it's supposed to be the high bar. Yeah, but it's, it's but that's such fruits. a low bar. <laughs> but so, like, they did such a good job here. They, mm-hmm. they did a good job with the characters. And finally, we have people in charge who they aren't trying to destroy the expanded universe like Kathleen Kennedy was. It's like, oh, we don't have comics and books. It's like, yes, you do. You just destroyed them. <laughs> and these people are going back and going like, look, we do have these things. We have the these video, video game. games. We have things that we can pull from that are emotional moments. And they did a really, really yeah. good job putting it all together. And even though it was only 32 minutes, it was excellent. And so this Very wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, I still think that it's not the best episode Ten. of the season. I still it, think that D- it, Dave Filoni's episode was. Um, but yeah, this is a 10. This is, I mean. Did it. Yeah. <laughs> And did it. He did it. It was good. No. It was good. No, it it was really good. but he's, really good he's differentiating. You can have a ten. Doesn't, ha- doesn't mean it's the best episode. It's not the, of the best. Season. No, no. It's just, it's just like it's this is really good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I said before, like if you're arguing between nine and ten, it's still up. You're there. in a great <laughs> spot for a TV show. And I'm I'm right there with you, Alex. I I was actually searching for reasons to give it a nine. It's like why? Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, it, because it was, they've hurt you before. You know you're gonna get hurt. Kylo Ren. Get hurt at some point. You're comparing shit to Kylo Ren. Nah, it's in different hands. Yo, it's in different hands. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, there's no. Uh, I enjoyed it that much. There's no reason. I'm low. I was looking for the flaws. I didn't find any. Uh, it relies on tropes. Is the that's the worst show. thing that That's you can say, thing, but, but when then they're done in this manner and when they're done in the Star Wars universe this well and uh, with this kind of writing, it does not matter at all. Just because tropes exist doesn't make it a negative thing. So I just love this episode, love the characters, love Bill Burr, love uh, where the show has been going and, and, and how the characters have been developing, not just the main characters, but the side characters as yeah. well. Uh, people are actually showing uh, arcs and changing, and uh, it's, it's just great. Now, I do know, and I agree with Alex, it's uh, short, 
criminal sh- criminal short. Um, I that last episode better be an hour because I guarantee you, here's what's gonna happen. We're going into a cliffhanger. We're going into yes. a very frustrating. Uh, cut the end of the episode off kind of ending, right? Um, uh, Star Wars has a tendency to do this, right? You know, Empire Strikes Back kind of thing. We're going to have an Empire Strikes Back situation. The reason why I'm telling you this, uh, by the way, 10 out of 10. (laughs) Let me just say that. (laughs) 10 out of 10, guys. All across the board. (laughs) All across the board. These episodes have been fantastic. But here's why we're we're heading for a cliffhanger ending. Um, They've already announced season three is a guarantee. It's already going. And they've announced the release date for season three, which is uh, December 18th. No, Christmas. The Christmas day of uh, next year, which is like, damn, man. I wanted to be in November and then have it in Christmas. So it's actually going to cross over into 2022 while we're still watching season three of The Mandalorian. And I think I'm like, why are they rushing so much to give us an an actual date and have that date be a little later than normal? And I think it's because not only are they probably supersizing the season, hopefully, and and, and doing a lot more, maybe giving some more money in there, uh, new and more complex shots, but it's because they know What's about to happen is a cliffhanger anger. So, okay, we're going to tell you exactly when it's coming. We're going to give you – here's when it's coming, and please just be patient because, boom, you already have the date. That's why I know it's not going to be a satisfying – it might be It might be a satisfying ending, but I guarantee you it's going to be a cliffhanger. Oh, for sure. So, anyways, um, really looking forward to it. This was the second-to-last episode. I don't want it to end. I'm – I'm really just enjoying it. Like Joe says, I'm a kid again. And uh, that's what, what I... What are we going to do Fridays now, man? I got nothing to do. I know, right? Damn what it. do we do? Watch uh, television next month, I guess. Well, guys, <laughs> it's looking like a bright future for Star Wars. looking like a bright future for Disney+, Plus. Uh, bright future for uh, HBO Max. So there's plenty of content and a bright future for the Angry Joe Show because we can cover a lot of these really interesting shows together if you guys <laughs> like. And... Uh, but this is a good one, and I we hope it maintains uh, this level. And to yeah. give so many 10 out of 10s in Season 2, I'm very, very happy. All right. Well, this one ran a little long, but uh, we love it. And thank you guys so much for watching. Big thanks to Surfshark. If you guys want to support this show and future shows, click those links down below. It lets them know that you guys are engaging uh, with that service. And, and give it uh, some thought. Consider it, at least. This is actually longer than the Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. We always go longer <laughs> just because we love talking yeah. about it. <laughs> every aspect summarizing the episodes giving you play by play of what we think of it and just great yeah. great uh th- I, we could we talk for hours honestly because you have those scarab troopers like obviously not called scarab troopers they're like mud trooper or they're like planet individual troopers i love it it was just <laughs> fucking great anyways guys thank y'all so much and we will see you on the next angry joe show bye guys, bye guys. <laughs>